guys welcome back to the channel this is emma you're at crime stories obsessed tonight we are streaming live to youtube as always and we are also streaming live to facebook uh, in order to shed some light and not to forget this beautiful little girl nicole van noti who was murdered at the age of five years of age. We are going to have her mum on so she can tell her story. We obviously need to bear in mind tonight that this is a very sensitive subject. And although this happened 28 years ago, it's something that is still very raw. We do not want to re-traumatise um, the victims um, in this case. We want to draw attention to the traumatizing, horrendous crime um, that was committed back in 1994. But we also want to shed light on a new law that has been brought out by the US Supreme Court. Now that does affect many families throughout the USA, re-traumatizing victims years and years after the crime. So, hi guys, thank you for joining me. I am here. I am behind this photo. For some reason, you cannot see me. So, let's remove the photos. There I am. Hi guys. So, we're doing the curly look today. Um, it's called the I can't be bothered to dry my hair in this heat look. So, we're going to go with the natural curls today. Um, thank you all for joining me. Uh, Nana's Angels here, Candice, Robin. Hello, hello. <laughs> thank you all for joining me. Now, um, thank you, Hip. I've been messaging Robin behind the scenes and she's such a lovely lady. And it's just really sad when I've been going through this whole story. It really is. It's, it's how this lady has been so strong. Honestly, I've asked her, she said that God is with her and that's how, you know, she remains strong. And my hat is off to her because this losing one child in 1994, her only daughter was not enough. She ended up losing her son as well in 2015 when he had an epileptic seizure whilst fitting and drowned so there's going to be quite a lot of hard things to hear tonight we may need to put a trigger warning in the chat i did have a ticker that was going around so she will be coming up anytime and we can have a chat with her with robin about the situation everything that's gone on she can tell the story, her story of that day and how certain things that have happened since are still causing trauma for this family years and years later. I do want to put a trigger warning across the bottom, but at the minute I want people to be able to see who we're talking to today. She's having to relive this situation because there has been a, a new law. The Supreme Court has decided that life behind bars is now cruel and unusual uh, punishment and unconstitutional punishment for kids. So they're saying any children that are behind bars now that have been given life without parole um, are being looked at. And now the juvenile sentenced to life um, behind bars without parole are be resentenced. Um, so you can imagine how the families are having to deal with this, to have to go through and relive the situation all over again, you know, to have to go through it all again. It's, it's just unbelievable. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. Are you sure you're all right to do this tonight? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I've been dealing with it for this long. So, 
this is your little girl on the screen mm -hmm. this is nicole. and what year was nicole born in 1987 87 so how old would she be now 32 32 I know you're, you've are you said you're nervous about tonight coming on, but everybody in the chat's lovely and they're all um, here to support you tonight, don't worry, okay? Yes. So what was Nicole like? What did she enjoy? Tell us about Nicole. So Nicole had two older brothers and... Mm -hmm. You know how siblings are. Um, <laughs> yeah. Her older brother was like very protective of her. And oh. I mean, they all got along, but as they got a little bit older, they were all fussing each other. And I had to, I had to put strings on their bedroom doors to keep them in their bedrooms. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to, to bed. Eat. They kept sneaking in each other's rooms and staying up all night. And I'm like, no, there's got to be a way to stop this. Yeah. And but the frustrating things that were then, now you look back and laugh at, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but Nicole, she, um, something funny about Nicole is she, she wasn't a typical female. She, um... A girl, she didn't like to play with dolls and doll houses. She played with trucks and cars. and <laughs> So she was a tomboy then? Climbing trees, wondering how she's going to get down. I'm like, I have no idea how you even got up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> your brother's going to have to come and get you down. Oh. Oh, bless her. So you lived at the time, you lived in, where did you say it was? Beaver, somewhere Creek? Battle Creek, Michigan. Ba Battle Creek, Michigan. Obviously, I'm from the UK, so I don't know any of these places. I've heard of some of them. So you lived in Battle Creek. And yeah. was it just you? Were you were, did you have a partner or was it just you and the kids? And Well, I had a boyfriend. I actually was with Nicole's father and we broke up and he ended up moving in with someone in the apartment complex where we live. Oh, gosh. So Nicole would just run across the yard to go see her dad. Oh. And we moved out of there and I was with somebody else and after my daughter was murdered we split and yeah it leaves a, a lot of strain i guess on i haven't been through it but i can imagine it leaves a lot of strain and stress on any relationships yeah but you know so Nicole, she was a good girl she didn't i mean Jason's stepsister was her best friend. I mean, I, I couldn't say no. I mean, they only lived across the street. And that was her everyday thing, you know? Change her clothes, get a snack, and go to Nikki's house and play. And I couldn't tell her no. So the, so the day that she went missing, was, was that a normal day for you up until that point everything had been normal yes it sure didn't take me long to call the police though no i can imagine so was it about she had, sorry she had to come home she had to check in with me and she wasn't and then i didn't see her in the yard because they had a fenced in yard because they had puppies and um why well, didn't i didn't see her so i went over there and i nobody i didn't see anyone so i called the police and 
then everyone just started looking. I mean, we were all, there was like 20, then it went to 50, then it went to 100, then everyone's out there looking. Then it started pouring down, freezing cold rain, April 25th. I was like, how is this even possible? Well, you never think these things are going to happen to you. You always kind of think it's going to be somebody else, I can imagine. Um, this house here, is this, um, is that his house or is that a friend's house? That was his dad's house. Right. Okay. And, and then, the, and then you lived here. Mm hmm and then the kids used to apparently go and play in this abandoned house yes um jason's father actually owned that house it's quite a big house isn't it so it was just no furniture or anything and and the gosh, no furniture and anything and and all the kids just used to go and play in it did they yes but it wasn't boarded up like that no how did they even get in there they got in there from the back door no oh. and so they used to like play houses in there and it was fairly safe and, and then they used to come home i guess yes yeah so that day you searched yourself as anybody would looking for their child and then you rang uh, the police around 3.30 and had a good look round and couldn't see her anywhere and they apparently searched until about 2.30 in the morning. Is that right? Well, they were... I'm not really sure how long they searched. I think it was an all-night search mm. but I know I didn't go to sleep that night um I know I couldn't go upstairs in my bed because you know my daughter was out there somewhere and never in my life that I th thought that you know Jason could do something like this never no. so the police came out and the following day um they were looking obviously they asked you all the questions what was she wearing what you know was there anything significant that we we've got to go on re in regards to what to look for and she'd apparently got some quite bright pink socks on is that right yes so she'd gone out, gone out. and the police officer had said that he searched the abandoned property mm -hmm. and inside did he find one of the pink socks in there yes he found her pink sock he found her shoes her clothes he only found one pink sock one pink sock and then when the the day after she went missing she was apparently found around the back of this property yes yeah okay where they said they'd actually looked or looked in some respect the day before but they'd not seen her um, now, when they were looking for her, this boy was actually stood behind the police officer when they found her and just stood there. Crazy. So he was arrested and his name was, is it Benjamin? Benjamin Jason. Simmons? Jason, Jason. Benjamin. Simon. Jason Simon. Simons. I've got it written down here. I've got Jason Benjamin Simons. Is that right? Right. 
and he was 16 years of age guys 16 he lived across the road in this house and he his little sister was best friends with your daughter so they played together and you know they were good friends and so that's how he kind of knew them knew her yes but his plan was different that day was it he did he knew that nikki wasn't there he asked nicole to come and play with nikki if he if um. she wanted to come and play with nikki he knew she wasn't there he already knew and he planned everything out I mean, I've got to kind of consider at this point, did this boy have some kind of learning development problems or, you know, is there something wrong with him? I mean, did he have a bad life at home or, you know, there's the certain things you ask yourself when well, you try and make sense. From what I know, he was an A-B honor roll student. Right. Um, and i mean he's never disrespected me as far as a little 16 year old you know he's never done anything wrong to me except for that day he was always kind and i always went over and played with the puppies too but that day i don't i i, I the next day i asked his father i said what happened I mean, you know, what What made him do this? What was he doing? And he told me he was watching scary movies. And I'm like, the scary movies don't make someone do this. No. No, I agree. I, I mean, it kind of makes movies. you think. Yeah, exactly. I don't go around killing people and raping them and, you know. And... No. 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 And... The police, the police found her, um, and when they took him in for questioning and they asked him, I'm, I mean, how did they know it was him? Did he admit it straight away or? He actually went, him and his friend, Joseph, they went mm. walking that morning after he um, put Nicole in a shallow grave. Yeah. They went walking to Kmart, which was like maybe three blocks from the house. And he told his friend, joking around, telling his friend, you know, what he did to Nicole. And his friend mm. kind of lingered behind him and called the police. And when the police arrived at the house, Police, yeah. you know, they're very, very observant. And mm -hmm. when they're in the house, they're looking everywhere. And they noticed his boots. Well, they noticed a pair of boots, I would say. And he noticed that there was blood marks spots on them. So that's that when, gave it that's away. When, that's when he, yep, that's when it, that's when it all happened. But I tried to go back there. They they would not let me. They actually carried me back to my house. They guarded my doors. And about an hour and a half later, they asked me about a specific funeral home. And I'm like, I couldn't even what? answer them. Oh, my God. I, I couldn't even answer them. I... I actually fell out and they took me to the hospital and they gave me volume and I woke up to a pastor next to me and I'm I'm like, what's going on? What happened? And at this time, my other two children were in temporary um, with the CPS, temporary. So I could get myself back together, you know. Mm -hmm. 
it wasn't because of something I've done. It's just because I needed to get myself right, which. Yeah, of course. Well, you, you can't look after kids when you're like, when you're in that state. No. And I couldn't do anything to him. I, he had already been arrested, but. So did you know that they'd found her then? Did uh, did you get a feeling when you were looking out of the window or? When I walked over there and they saw me coming, they stopped me immediately and took. I, I had to fight through them. I was like, I'm going out. I'm going back there. And they said, no, ma'am, you're not going back there. And she was in a garbage, black garbage bag with one sock on and a hatchet in her skull. Oh. And they they told me, you do not want to see what we are looking at. And I guess at that time, I really didn't. I didn't even, I don't know how to say it. I guess I wasn't even thinking that I didn't want to. I just wanted to know, you know. Well, yeah, you want to see, you want to know. But then actually when you do get to see something like that, then you can retract and think, oh, actually, no, I wish I hadn't seen that. But then it's too late at that point, you know. Well, living with it for all these years, knowing everything he did to her, that's the hard part that's what i can't get out of my head knowing what he yeah. did to her and you weren't there yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean i mean i don't because i wasn't there but i can imagine and his answer when they took him into custody and they said why did you do this why because i wanted to was his answer I mean, the, yeah, I mean, this, the, this poor, poor girl, the things that happened, I'm not even going to, um, I'm not even going to say on here, not because I don't want to, but just because it's not fair on you, Robin, to to, for us to just mention for me to mention that anyway I can honestly um, tell you I had to fight with the funeral home to have an open casket and they told me absolutely not I said you will have her casket open mm -hmm. so they made it so her casket could be open I don't care how hard you gotta work to make her look like my daughter but you're going to open that casket. Well, it's good that you did that. And that was your wishes. And at a time like that, people should be respectful and have some compassion when it comes to requests. Because you don't have a lot of choices when it comes to a situation like that. You know. Um. The weapons used in this case were a wooden pole, a curtain rod, and a hatchet. And I don't know if I'm reading this wrong here, but I made a note of something that he apparently said. I wanted to make sure she was gone. I mean, is that correct? Mm hmm I mean, I was just disgusted even writing that down on this paper. Now, he was sentenced to life without yeah. parole. Is that correct? At 17, yes. Yeah. At 17 years of age when this trial commenced. And he has spent the last, is it nearly 20, is it about 28 years now he must have spent? 28, yes. 28 years in Ion, in Ionia, Ionia prison. State prison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
so I've got notes here I've been making notes all day I just well, the... I know and I know in my heart that mm -hmm. even though Nicole did fight back, I know I don't you know Jason thought he was doing something, but God already took Nicole's soul, so he yeah. he wasn't doing nothing. He was just he thought he was doing something, but it was just a shell. He wasn't doing nothing. She wasn't even there. God don't let his children suffer. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean on that part because when I went to see my granddad and I was only a teenager and I remember saying to my mom, there's something missing, mom. And I, I didn't understand at that time. I was like, mom, there's something missing. It's not granddad. It's like he's there, but he's not there. And she explained mm -hmm. that to me at the time. And I was like, wow, I'd never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. It took me a lot of time true. to think about it. Yeah. You are so amazing, Robin. You really are. You are. I know you probably sit there and think, I'm not strong or whatever it is you say to yourself, but you really are. To go through everything you've gone through and still be standing at the end of the day and have all those wonderful memories and you know, in your own words, um, I will stand up. What was it you said? Stand up for her until the day, until I have no breath left or something. Right. And that's just, that's amazing. It really is. I mean, this uh -huh. guy, this, sorry, so, oh, carry on. Glory to God. All the glory to God. That's all I can say. I couldn't do it alone. Yeah. No. And you know, my son, he he's not understanding this judicial system. I mean, what is this Miller case versus Alabama? What the hell is this? What the? This man was sentenced to natural life in prison without the possibility of parole, and now you want to bring down the Miller case and let him have the 28 years and let him out if he's sentenced to 60 he only does another 30 yeah so this is the new laws set out by the u.s supreme court is that correct yes and the, so i mean this is affecting families all over the usa because there'll be there'll be a lot of families now that are having to relive their traumas because of these new laws mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean do, do they is, is it because of a overcrowding are they just trying to get people out and they're just trying to think of anything possible a lot of these people that are in there for life without parole are in there for a good reason you don't just get life without parole because you've gone and robbed a corner shop you know you're in right. there with life about parole because you've done something to someone you've taken someone's life and life should mean life exactly. this boy was 16 he knew right from wrong guys he knew right from wrong he knew what he was doing he knew exactly what he was doing and i mean what were his family a nice family do you did you ever get any thoughts that they were you know abusive family or there was he anything from, he came from cambodia Cam, i think i'm saying it right cambodia his father, yeah. his father had to go through a large a large battle with his mother to get his to get custody of jason and that's where jason came from cambodia and I mean, we don't know what he saw over there, do we? What he saw as a child. Not that well, I'm making up I've, excuses for him at from all. From what I understand, his mother abused him. 
Mm-hmm. But I've never, of course, I've never met his mother. I've met his stepmother. His stepmother actually just passed away a few weeks ago with four stage cancer, and they didn't even know she even had it. had it. And that was Nikki's mom, and Nikki, Nikki passed away um, um, a couple years ago. Someone laced her. Um, her marijuana with fentanyl and she overdosed and wow that picture that I was holding when I did the rally and I gave it to Nikki and she just stood there and cried I said don't cry this is what I wanted to do I wanted you to have this picture she loved Nicole, I mean, they were almost the same age. Nicole didn't even make it to kindergarten. Best friends. <laughs> yeah, they were best friends. Jason had two sisters. Nicole was just his stepsister. Yeah. Did he... Did these parents stand by him, then, after all this? I don't know. You don't know? No. I don't know. I don't even remember seeing his father in the courtroom. And I, I do remember that his stepmother ended up leaving his father. Oh, gosh. And Jason didn't only hurt me and my family, he hurt a whole community and everyone that knew, I mean, from everywhere. I mean, my dad heard it down here where I live and I didn't, I didn't even get a chance to call him and tell him. He called me and, and he said he's on the next plane and I was like, how do you know? He's like, I heard, just heard it on the news. Wow. So he's still currently locked away. Is that correct? Yes. And they're and, prolonging. They're and prolonging. they're talking. They're prolonging it. Well, they're prolonging it for you as well because you're wondering what's going on constantly. I'm sure. Always. And now, I mean, I did. Hmm? I, we were supposed to go to court last year. It didn't happen. Yeah. We're supposed to go to court this year. It's been postponed because he needs a psych evaluation. Plus, the defense attorney quit. So they need to redo. The, they got to get another defense attorney, which they do have one as of June. And now he's got to go through the whole case all over. And. <laughs> well, I mean, I was looking. Um into him earlier on and, and trying to get some information on him and I came across I came across this now it's a, a state of Michigan Court of Appeals paperwork uh, defendant appeals as of the right of his conviction by jury of first degree murder um, and then it says, although a ju juvenile at the time he committed the offence, 16-year-old defendant was sentenced as an adult to life in prison without parole. According to the testimony presented at trial, defendant lured his stepsister's five-year-old playmate into the basement of an abandoned boarded-up house owned by his father, located near the defendant's home, once in the basement... We know what happened there. Then he struck her numerous times. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and then put her outside. We know she was found there. Um, the following day, the defendant allegedly incriminated himself to a friend. And after agreeing to be interviewed by the police, the defendant confessed that he had killed the victim. On appeal, the defendant first argues that he was detained that he was denied his right to confront the cross-examine 
the witness against him when he was not allowed to impeach a prosecution witness who was awaiting sentencing on fourth degree criminal sexual conduct conviction at the time he spoke to the police. They don't have many full stops in this, I can tell you. Defendant contends um, that because the witness was awaiting sentencing when he was implicated, when he was implicated defendant, he should have been able to, to explore the witness's motive and potential bias. We find that even if the lower court abused its discretion in refusing to allow for cross-examination on that issue, uh, such an error was harmless considering the overwhelming evidence presented against the defendant at the trial. Um, and then it says the defendant argues... Uh, that the trial court erred in failing to construct the jury, blah blah blah. So it's talking about what he, what they feel is is a problem. Um, and it says although a criminal defendant has the right to have properly instructed jury consider the evidence against him, the trial court is not required to present. An instruction, sue, spont. Oh, I don't know any of that. Let's move over. Uh, moreover, before an instruction on defendant's theory of the case can go to the jury, not only must it be requested, it must also be supported by the evidence presented during the trial. There was one bit that actually got me, and I just thought, are they actually serious here? Um... When confessing to the friend, although defendant claimed that he did not mean to kill the victim, he did admit to intentionally striking her more than once, which is premeditated. You know, you know what you're doing at that point, more than once. It's not certainly not defense, is it? And when confessing to the police, although defendant initially claimed that he had accidentally struck the victim while chopping a tree in the backyard, he later contradicted the claim by admitting that he had struck um, down the struck her down the basement steps. Th furthermore, we note that even if defendant continued to maintain that the initial blow was accidental, he did admit that he hit the victim more than once. Um, therefore, despite defendant's bold claims of accident, it is clear from his own confessions that his acts were intentional. As well as, co uh, as well as consequences of those acts based on the evidence presented, we find that no responsible juror would be convinced that defendant was entitled to acquittal under the theory of accident. Um, da, da, da. So he's basically, what, is he trying to say it was an accident and hoping that what, even though he struck her, he's got no, he's got no, defense there if he's saying it was an accident when he struck her more than once none at all you know exactly what he was doing and no juror like it says there is going to think anything other than what we've just said um but now i'm guessing they're going down the let's do the insane uh thing get a psychiatric evaluation and hopefully um, get the jury to feel sorry for him because he's got something that they've just diagnosed him with. You know, is, it, is that what's going to be next? You know, it's just... Actually, I'm sorry. Actually, there wasn't ever a jury. And I called the victim's unit and I asked them, you know, why can't... I mean, y'all are going to resentence him under the Miller case versus Alabama. You're going to actually resentence him because of the statue that came out in 2012. He's already been sentenced. Under exactly. Under that Miller case versus Alabama, they have to give him what is called term of years. So it's up to the judge. The prosecutor's going for life. It's all up to the judge. But she can sentence him to 60 years. 
40 to 60 years added, but the kicker is he gets the 28 years that he's already served took off of that 60 years. Yeah, and, and that shouldn't be the case. You know, once somebody's sentenced, they're sentenced. If a new law comes in, it's like, it's like, I mean, this is a completely different situation, but it's a similar thing. I'm under a contract at work. I've been there a very long time. Whatever I pay in, I get back double when I leave and I retire. Somebody comes in now, they're on the new contract. They get the new pension. That's how it works. You can't sentence somebody to a certain amount of time. And then when a new law comes in, go back and start pulling these people out and saying, well, let's retry them again or let's look at the case again. No, 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 no. You sentence them to life. That should be it. Surely. That's what I'm not understanding either. And no. nobody, can, nobody can make me understand that. My, my son is the same way. We do not understand this. He was already sentenced as an adult to natural life, natural life in prison without parole. I can't fight the Supreme Court. No. I can't. No. You can only do what you can do at the end of the day. And you don't have the power um to be able to do that now can we just just break just for one second um this stream is not about uh kylie rodney but i will just let everybody know in the chat quickly she has been found which is probably why there's not many people in here at the minute um she's apparently been found under 14 foot of water upside down in her car so whether she you know something mysterious went on and she overdosed and they pushed the car in or whether she's just driven home and ended up in there we don't know i'm sure more information will come up later she has been found by adventures with purpose as far as i'm aware brilliant people and um that's probably why there's not yeah she's, it's good she's been found for the family not good the situation that she's obviously another family with grief and unfortunately this crime community that's that's what we're dealing with all the time you know grief sadness it, it is it's a lot and you know i can't even begin to imagine i try with my job i see a lot of death and and heartache and screaming relatives and things and it's a lot but i couldn't actually imagine unless i was in that situation what you've been going through all these years um this video will get a lot of attention i'm sure we do have quite a big channel right now our numbers are low i think because of the fact that kylie has apparently been found but people will come back and watch it later i'm sure they usually do um but uh, let me get my, my sheet of paper back got a bit carried away there um so he's still there he's awaiting this new trial if he's obviously going to go on the accident theory that's not going to hold up they've already told him that so now in order to get him out they're obviously trying to press his solicitor or we call it solicitor over here i don't know what you call them over there um are trying to press on two particular uh parts of the investigation um to say that he wasn't fairly treated in regards to i think when he was being spoken to in the police station is that right and then a, another point um oh, that's bad. Mm -hmm. but that's that acts too bad yeah and the accident theory is not going to stand up we know that i mean they've even said that i was thinking that earlier on i was like i actually laughed out loud not in a funny way but in a like a sarcastic are you actually serious right now kind of a way um and i'm sure in order for him to try 
he's going to have to try it. The psychiatric thing will have been his his uh, attorneys or solicitors, whatever you call it, um, their idea, I'm guessing. You know, yeah. this is one of your only chances now. We've, we've gone down every other route. You know, he if nothing else is going to stop. He has to be psychological, psychologically examined all prisoners when they're about to go back into court. They have to be... He hasn't been psychologically examined since he's been there. So they're trying to figure out if he is if he is um, okay to be let out, mm -hmm. you know, they they need to find out. I wish you could have played the news because I know it just, it, just, it just tells so much more than what I can remember her saying. But well, I mean, how how can how can your story help? Do you think help other people that are going through a similar thing you know whether it be murder or whether it be just um the the loss of a child in general like kylie's parents you know how how can your story help others do you think and just don't give up don't give up and the strength don't that you up. have yeah i mean to carry on i i did not make my daughter's group um, a woman up in Michigan made it and it's been going strong for years. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and I'm part of this group and there is also a petition on there, guys. So if you are interested in going across um, to the page, let me get it up here. So it is called... I'm loading it. It's loading, loading. We are Nicole's voice. We are Nicole's voice. If you have any problem getting on, uh, let me know and I'll see if I can organise for an invite for you or, or I'm sure there's there's a way. Um, and on there, there is also a petition for justice as well. So if you could, that would be amazing if you could sign that petition because you know that what we've spoken about tonight is just the half of it i mean we could go into graphic details about exactly what happened and you would be shocked it's really not nice um i mean i you don't know. have a problem talking about what he did to her at all because i live with it and i've been talking to a lady that's been up all night long doing research on nicole and the case and yeah she's such an awesome person and she's probably in your chat music musically mama oh yeah and, she's there and <laughs> she's just i called her last night and she said she was reading the 1997 appeals i said he he exalted all his appeals his first couple years in prison <laughs> yeah you don't that was any, yeah that was what I was... sorry <laughs> no so he can't i mean is there any chance that they can you know tr i mean are these, is he still trying is it so i mean they're gonna have this psychiatric r review and then what try again or is he not able to try again now no no so he is he is in there for burned. life now oh. to a judge okay i need i need more letters and i need the petition signed um yeah you know this is the second petition and the only reason i've done a second petition is to make sure this judge's eyes are open because the first petition went out with 1600 signatures and wow. that was a couple of years ago so i'm way that's ahead amazing of yeah, and so musically mom musically mom you're amazing for supporting this lady you really are i want to personally thank you for everything you've done for her thank you um have you had a lot of support from friends and family 
And your children? Um, well, you were the boy. Um, my son, he. They actually just had a baby. She's all about. <gasps> she's about three months old. And. Oh. What did they call uh, her? Her name is um, Vanessa Navea. Oh. That's so nice. And you. So. Um, that's nice because. A, a beautiful little girl, you know, another little girl into the family. Oh. He has three daughters now. Oh, has he? Sons. That's really nice. And the next and... one's going to be a boy, so they've already planned it out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they've really got their hands full. Wow. Do they not have a t TV? Like, do, they, do they have a television? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's going on there? <laughs> Oh, hey, he's, got actually, Matt, he's like, Mom, I just love kids. Oh, bless him. He's a natural then. Absolute natural. And you know what? That's that's because of the way you brought him up, because of the love and affection and the way that he's seen you bring him up. And he's wanted to have that for himself. He's wanted that family for himself. Mm-hmm. You know? Which is really nice. Now, I know you moved away from this area, not saying where, but you did move away. Is that because you wanted to be closer to family after this happened? Because a lot of people can't move, can they? They, like, leave the bedrooms the same and everything. And you moved. It's because people wouldn't leave me alone. Like, every day someone was knocking at my door. Oh. And my dad warned oh. me about it. Oh no. And it actually took me six months to just pack up my little Toyota Corolla's trunk and and just drive. Yeah. Good. Good. I mean those people that are in it for the drama, like they 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 you're not your friend and never speak to you uh, ninety nine percent of the time, but as soon as there's a bit of drama or something's gone on, they're knocking at your door. That kind no, of thing. They, I mean, just no. It was never. It was never drama. No. It was always, you know, they're bringing me food, money. Oh, I see. You know, balloons, flowers. I mean, just. I'll be nice, but it just a lot of it, and you just, yeah, oh, wanted to be much. left alone. Yeah, too yeah, much. I understand. And I was constantly on the news, and I'm like, now I want to be on the news. Now, then I didn't want to be bothered now i'm now i'm ready and i've been on the news many times yeah i've and seen I've back, and i've been back to michigan many times rallying you know i recognize your profile photo now you've commented under my videos before um mm -hmm. lots of times and when i after i said it earlier on i thought what am i on about <laughs> i think it's because you'd never messaged me before um, so I was like, oh, who's this? <laughs> but um, how how do you feel that this has impacted your life? Um, well, besides the fact that I'm getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? Yeah. I'm not going to ever. I don't. I don't. I. I you never get over that. I hate him. I really yeah. hate him. I and have nothing inside of me for this man at all. I don't care if he dies in prison. I don't care if someone sneaks up and strangles him. I really, I know it probably sounds cold, mm -hmm. but what he did to my daughter is, is, not human it's yeah. not human no and I've, I've oh sorry i'm just dropping the microphone um i'm religious and i know they do they say you know you forgive and all this and i've, I've heard people before saying that they'd forgiven um people that you know you've seen it haven't you where they've forgiven the murderer of their child or their parent or and i don't know how they do that i mean i i I find it easy to forgive people now, people that have done me wrong. But that, being in that situation, I don't know how I'd feel. 
I don't think I could. Back. I'd want, I would want to just kill them. I know that sounds terrible. I mean, I'd be laid in bed working about how, how I was going to dig my way into that prison so I could get my hands around his neck. Right. That but it doesn't sense. do you any good, does it? No, because, I mean, then I would be in where he's at, you know? Exactly. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's got to crush your mind, hasn't it? Oh, it crossed my mind many times. <sighs> the bottom, which is about to be shown any second, if anybody's interested, which I think she uses that for travel expenses back and forth and attendances in court, all that kind of thing, you know, anything that she needs it for regarding the case um but it has been really lovely to have you on i think you are an amazing woman i think you can show a lot of people out there um how strength and faith can pull you through a bad situation and although it's something that will never heal it's something that you can get through Mm -hmm. Death with support final, you know yeah yes. and all these psychics out here talking about how they talk to summer no you're not talking to summer summer ain't talking to you either so whatever you're talking about is not even true because my daughter's never talked to me and she's been gone for 28 years and she's never said a word to me so no. don't tell me that the summer's talking to you because she's not Pray for strength. I appreciate and you letting me come up, Emma, and cover my daughter's story. No, I really and appreciate it. Thank you for coming on. And Nana, if you're still in chat, I really appreciate you letting me know and letting Emma know about me. <laughs> yeah. Well, this stream is not monetized. I don't make anything off this stream. Because of the content that we're talking about, it is demonetized straight away. We're talking about murder. We're talking about terrible things. Um, so, you know, this this I'm not making any money off this, uh, this video. But thank you so much for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Um, and I'll probably see your thumbnail and I'll come in your group. I'll be there waving <laughs> and if okay. i can do anything signing uh, petitions putting your cash app out there which i've mentioned already that's running along the bottom of the screen and if i can share the um the petition i will do i will do um thank but you thank so you so much, much. you're welcome you're welcome um, so guys, thank you for listening. Thank you all for tuning in, whether you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube. Um, I know we've got, there seems to be quite a lot going on tonight. What with um, Kylie Rodney being found, if you didn't know, that's probably why there's not many in the stream, but I'm sure they will be watching later when they've finished watching that. But um, thank you for tuning in. Thanks to all the mods for doing what you do best. And um, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. God bless you. God bless you.